Hashem didn't want to listen to Bilam. Why? Ki ahevcha Hashem alekecha, because HaKadosh Baruch Hu loves you. Why did Bilam want to curse us? Because we did the Egel. Because we were chayte. No, Bilam, you missed the whole thing. You don't get it. Whenever Hashem Baruch has to give us Ein to bring us back, to cleanse us, to purify, to put us back in the good place where we want to be there. Ki ahevcha Hashem alekecha. We need to feel that Hashem loves you even when you're not perfect. Just a few more days left, the Tisha of the Pesiyat HaDashmai, we should merit that this year, instead of sitting on the floor and reading Kinas, we should be Zoycha, all of Klal Yisrael, to be together with Mashiach Tzedkenu and the Beis Hamikdash. The Tfilis we've done for thousands of years, Yiskadeh, of Yiskadeh, Shabbat Rabbah, Shabbat Neskayim, Be'ezer Hashem, Be'korev, V'yameinu. I want to apologize, the Rosh Chodesh special is coming out, not on Rosh Chodesh, but a few days late. Um, I was pushed away, and... Uh, I felt the Golas. I was in Chutz Laaretz. When in Eretz Yisrael, obviously we feel the Golas too, but I felt it even more. I guess would be properly being away from Eretz HaKodesh, Eretz Yisrael, and Klal Yisrael together home. It's so beautiful to be able to be coming back to Eretz Yisrael, not just for a visit, but to be able to live here. We should be like all of Klal Yisrael. Kapzenu yachad should come back, all of us home together with So the month of Av, the month of Tisha B'Av, the month of the both Churbanos, both Batei Hamikdash, and the Emesis, we know, the Vilna Gain tells us that the destruction of the second base Hamikdash was more Chamur than the first one, find it in Halacha, and that's reflected, the Gain says, if we look at the Golas that came out of each of the two Churbanos, the Churban Bayis Rishon was a Golas out of Eretz Yisrael for 70 years. 70 years later, we were back again. Although the Bayis Sheni wasn't in the same dark as the Bayis Rishon, Kiyodua. Ramchal says that the whole coming back for the second Beis HaMikdash was really sort of a preparation for the Golas of after the second Beis HaMikdash. But Al-Kopanim, the Golas itself after Bayis Rishon was 70 years. And then we came back to Eretz Yisrael, again to the Bayis Sheni. The Churban of the Bayis Sheni is the Golas that was still suffering from, was still experiencing and that's a goal that's close already now, come out 2,000 years, should be over. So we see that the second base of Migdosh was so much um, worse, the destruction was so much more impactful to Klal Yisrael than the first. In Skiyodua, the Goyen says that the first base of Migdosh was destroyed for Avoy Dezor Gilarai, Shri Chastamim. The second base of Migdosh was destroyed because of Lashon Hara and Sinas Chinam. And we see that the destruction of the second base of Migdash, the, 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 incur- the imperfection that existed within Klal Yisrael that brought about the Chorban was so much more of a, a, a broader and deeper kilkel, I guess is the best word, I don't have the right word here in English, but what was, what was incorrect within us that brought about the Churban of the Bayes Sheni was so much bigger and greater than the, the problem that caused the Churban Bayes Rishon because look look at the effect it had. It was still here 2,000 years later. Kamat, still sitting in Golos. So to understand a little bit, it's, you know, the Iker, the basic idea, there's Chitsoinius of problems, Yetzir Hara, and then there's like the Shoyrish Apnimi of a, of, of a Yiddish and a Shama, which life is all about Kesher with Hashem Yisbarech, the Lashon Haran Sinas Chinam reflects, when we're not living together with each other correctly, that reflects also Mamela, that our whole, the Mahus, of our whole relationship with Hashem Yisbarech is off, and that, that's what's something that takes so much work to fix. We see this idea also, really, because both Shabbat Batamas and Tishabav have a Shoirish much earlier on. It didn't begin with the Churban Abayas, but it really began with Klal Yisrael in the Midbar. Already in the beginning of our history and our the formative state as a nation, where we were being created as Klal Yisrael, there was something awful ready then. And that at Oiskishpigel, the Chtel Zechois, later, years later, by the Churban Abayas, the Shabbos Abetamas Kiyodu was the Shriras Haluchais, the Egel Azov, that came out to be the day of, of the breaking through the walls of Yerushalayim, and, and the Tisha B'Av Kiyodua was the day when the Miraglim came back to the Yidin in the Midbar, and they, they said Lashon Hara, they said Lashon Hara, so it's again the same, although there they were talking about Lashon Hara, Ki'ilu, Klape Eretz Yisrael, Klape Baruch Hu, 
But it was again, it was the same Shoir Shachet of Lashon Hara that was the, the root of all of Tisha B'av, was already right at the beginning when we were starting our journey as Am Yisrael. The, the Ovis of Ram Yitzchak Yaakov worked to lay the foundation, and this was the beginning of Kalah Yisrael, Miyanach HaKabal Satoira. And we said the, the, the Lashon Hara was that root which ended up causing the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash, of the second Beis HaMikdash, so many years later. So we see already from back in the inception of Klal Yisrael as, it's, as a nation, Tisha B'av was the day there was something wrong about Lashon Hara. The Bnei Yisachar points out something so often so, so beautiful. And he, we mentioned many times that each of the months of the year are also reflected in one of the Shvatim, the power of one of the Shvatim. And it goes in the say that Golan we mentioned. So Nisan Iyar Sivan is the first um, Degel Degel of Yehuda, which was in the east, which was Yehuda Yusach Zvulun, we mentioned in Chodesh Sivan. And the three months of Tammuz Av and Elul are reflected in the second Degel. The Degel was down in the south, Yemin, Chesed, that was Ruvain, Shimon, and God. So in the Seder Atvarim, Tammuz is uh, Reuven, Av is Shimon, and God is reflected in Elul. So the Bnei Soska points out as follows. He says, the two months, Tammuz and Av, really were one part of the same story at a certain level. The Miraglim came back on Tisha B'av, the night of the ninth day of Av. How many days were the Miraglim in Eretz Yisrael being Miragel, going to check it out and see what they're going to find? 40 days. So if you go back 40 days, it means they left on Erev Rish Chodesh Tammuz. Rish Chodesh Tammuz, Erev Rish Chodesh Tammuz. So the whole month of Tammuz and the first 10 days of Av, the Miraglim were being Miragel. They were going and checking out Eretz Yisrael. They came back on Tisha B'av, and the night of Tisha B'av was the night that they said Lashon to Klal Yisrael. Ki the chait of Lashon Hara doesn't start mitzad, the one speaking Lashon Hara, the medaber. The chait of Lashon Hara doesn't start with speech. Speech is always when a person is expressing what he has inside of him. The pez, the opening the mouth, there's something inside, and the lips are svasayim, like svasayam, right? So you, you have things inside you, you open up pepe, you pesech, you open up like the svasayim, the svasayim and you let it all come out, Okay? So we're expressing what we have inside. What creates what we have inside is sort of what we see. But what we see is subjective, not objective, because what we see is always translated by us into what it means to us. We create a perception. Two people could see the same incident and they each perceive it and comprehend it and it means something differently to them. And one person... The muscle, I don't remember if we ever used it here in the Rosh Chodesh year, but, you know, someone has a very uh, protective mother and she's always like, you know, telling him, put on a sweater, it's cold outside, I want you to get sick, and things like that, right? And one person can feel my mother is like making me crazy and she's like, doesn't let me live and she's always telling me what to do and he's bothered and frustrated by it. Another person sees a mommy who loves him, who cares about him. Another person feels I'm so fortunate to have a mother who's so concerned about my welfare. So always thinking about me, you know, it could be it's true, it's a little bit much, and but what he sees, what he perceives is a, is, is a mother who cares. The other one sees a mother who's meddling in his business. And to each one of them, they're going to be left with how they perceive it. That's what the experience is going to mean to them. One person is going to be left being upset and frustrated. The other person is going to be left being happy because he, he feels he has such a wonderful mom who cares about him. So, so much of what we see is not um, exactly the facts themselves. It's what they mean to us. That's the koyach re'iya, the koyach to see. So when the Miraglim came back on Tisha B'av night and said Lashon Hara to Klal Yisrael, but Eretz Yisrael, Le'nucha, we're not going to be able to go up, uh, you know, we're going to get killed, it's, it's Eretz, that, you know, fortified cities and mighty warriors, giants, we're all going to get Rahman and Flan slaughtered. That was based, so to say, on what they came back with. That was the product of what they saw for those 40 days. Their perception was warped and they came back seeing negative. They said it over to Klal Yisrael. Kalal Yisrael now had the Nisayin of being Mechabel, this Lashon Hara, or not. You're telling me what you saw, but I could say that's not true, it's incorrect. I could choose to perceive things, to understand that it's based on your perception, and you have a negative perception, and I could challenge that. And I could say, no, it's going to be fine. And it's, they each had their own Nisayin. So the Helege B'nei Sosra points out so beautifully 
the, what was happening during the 40 days was the Meraglim was Shlichim of Klal Yisrael, and they tainted the Koyach Hariya. Urei Betuv Yerushalayim, Ayin Toiva, is one of the Nekudas we need, one of the five central Yusaydis of building a life of Tveikus Bashem is to have an Ayin Toiva to others, to Hashem, what Hashem is doing for us. The Meraglim failed in a Re'iya to see the good. What they saw in Eretz Yisrael was disaster. We're going to go look at these... Right? They could have seen Baruch Hashem. Look, Hashem sent big, strong people. It must be a country that's producing good, strong people, a great place to live. And amidst Hashem, we're going to conquer it. We're going to have nice fortified cities when we finish conquering it, right? Or, or not, right? But like the, the, the walls of Yericha came tumbling down. At the end, there was nothing. The whole thing was in your head. There was nothing to be afraid of. But the Maraglim were tainted, the Koychari, and they were Shlichim for Klal Yisrael. So there was a hate there at some level of not seeing the good. When they came back on Tishabav and told over to Klal Yisrael, Klal Yisrael was Makabel the Lashon Hara. Their Shmiel, like, what are they hearing? What are they listening to? What, is they, what are they internalizing from what the Meraglim saw in Eretz Yisrael? The Koyach Shmiel is always to, we, in Yiddish we use the expression to deher. To deher means to comprehend, to get the idea. Also, when we say Shema Yisrael, Shem Lekein Hashem Echad, Re'ir gives us like the whole picture, but the superficial level of it. So Re'il, you're getting a mile but a chasar, and you see the basic idea, but you don't have the depth. But Shmiel is like comprehending the meaningfulness. What does this mean to me now? What's the point? What does it mean? We cover our eyes every day. We say, Shema Yisrael, Shem Lekein Hashem Echad, means like, I understand that Re'il is the more superficial level. So now I don't want to do Re'il. I want to see, like, I want to make sure to understand what everything I see means to me. Shema Yisrael, Shem Lekein Hashem Echad. I, I comprehend that everything is all the Shem Havai, it's all Hashem's Chesed, everything that is happening in the whole world, Hashem Lekein, sometimes Chesed, sometimes Din, it's all Hashem Echad. So, Klal Yisrael fell in the Koyach Hashmiya of listening. Because what they heard in the story was like similar to what the Meraglim, it was in the Koyach Hashmiya of not the herring, the good, instead they saw, understood and, and, and took in, so to say, the negative perception that the Meraglim have. Let's go back again. What are the three months corresponding to Reuven, Shimon, and God? Tamuz and Av are Reuven and Shimon. Reuven is Milosh and Re'iyah. Ki ro, Leah said, Ki ro'o Hashem ba'ani. So the month of Tamuz is makbil to the koich of Re'iyah. Shimon has to do with Shmiyah. Ki shoma Hashem ki snu anoichi. So these two months that really correspond to the Koyach of Re'i and the Koyach of Shmiya, And both of these could be used Letoiv, obviously. The month of Tammuz was meant to be a month of Ure'ei Betuv Yerushalayim, to see the good, to see the beautiful, how much Shefa, what a wonderful land it is. Look at the grace of Paris and the grace of people. It's a land that it's thrive, vitality, energy, chiyas, v'chulei. And they interpreted it wrong. It was a nefila in the Koyach of Re'i. And, and Makbil, when, when they came back, and Klal Yisrael was listening to the report of the Miraglim, and they heard and took in the negative, so that was in the field in the Koyach of Shmir. And Emir Tzashem, the, the, the Bnei Sosra, points out that the avoid of these months is to be Mesak in these two things. Thomas to be Mesak in the Re'iyah, and of which we're now in the midst of is to be Mesak in Shmir. Both these things are true. Kav Yochel, Klape HaKadosh Baruch just as much as their true clappy people. What we experience with people is we're like the midas are being built more because a person is a flesh and blood, he's a metzias reality here in the world with us in a gashmi way that we, we could relate to more easily. But that all gets interpreted to how we also experience our relationship with Hashem Yisbarach. Someone who sees good in others and someone who listens and hears the good about other people He's the same type of person that's going to see good in Hashem's world. He's going to be the person that's going to be able to hear good in Hashem's world, listen to the message of what's happening of all the universe and all of history. He sees good and he hears good. A fascinating insight. The, the, the Gemara in Masech Brachas tells us that when a person is in a place where he can't daven a full Shemayin Esrei, let's say a soldier is on the battlefield and he only has a few minutes if he tries to have long he won't be able to concentrate because, you know, he's traveling sometimes on the side of the road in an airplane. Kids, if a person is a place where he's not able to dive in a full Shemayin Esri there's a certain tefillah called tefillahs havinenu. 
Tefilas Habilinu Minosh Menesha is composed of three parts, quickly. The first three brachas are birchas hashvach, praising Hashem. The last three brachas of every Shmanesrei are birchas of Hoidah, brachas of Hoidah, the Iker brachas Maidim. It's also interesting, Ritzay and Simshalom, but Akabonim, the Iker, it's called three brachas as a group, are considered the brachas of Hoidah. And the middle part of Shmanesrei, which 18, now is, it's really 19 today, but they added a, was 12 brachas of Bakosha. The 12 brachas that Amida on the weekday. Tvila is called Shemayin Esrei because there were 12 brachas of Akosha. Later on, the Gemara Brachas tells us they added a 13th bracha of Akosha of Alam al So now there's 13, it's really altogether 19. But Akopanim, that's where Shemayin Esrei got its name, the 18. So the middle 12 brachas are brachas of Akosha. In a situation where a person is not able to daven all the Shemayin Esrei Kitsurasa with Menucha to be able to concentrate, so Chazal made like a contracted Tvila. You could take all the um, middle 12 brachas and you compact them into one single bracha. For each one of the 12 brachas that we have a separate bracha and a regular Shemayin Esrei, we say two, three, four, five words just that encapsulate the idea of that bracha, of that bakosha. We're asking for all these things kiyadua, not really for now, but obviously all these 12 brachas come Com- comprise the full gamut, the full range of all human needs. It's also like a process, the Gemara says, like building up from one thing to the next to bring about, the, you know, as Tzemach Dabar to bring to Mashiach, Akoponim, and then Shema Kulein, all the tefillahs from all the Duras are going to be answered. Everything's going to be back, Bim Koyma, in its right place by the Gula, Sido, Shaniska, Shubizaych, and the Seed, Bekarov. So Akoponim, we take each one of these ideas from each of the 12 brachas and, com- you know, consolidate all of them together into one bracha. So I wanted to focus today. On the bracha of Hashiva Shaifteinu Kivari Shaina. That bracha, we're being mispalel kipshutai. If you look at the Tzuras bracha, we're asking Hashem to give us back fear judges. That's what the bracha sounds like. Shiva Shaifteinu Kivari Shaina. There should be people that are guiding us and, and teaching us to do right and guiding Klai as a nation. You know what? The, the justice system, if Chas the justice system is unjust, that's the greatest injustice in the world. If a person privately hurts somebody else or whatever, that's terrible. But the justice system is in place to enforce that people should be feared to each other, good to each other, people shouldn't take advantage of each other. And if Chashon, so kids are, Shiva Shafetim Kavar Shenvi Yatzen Kavat Chilo, and also Stam, guidance in life. When a person is confused, he doesn't know what's right. We all want to do the right thing, we're not sure what's right. We need people to tell us. And we finish Baruch to Hashem Melech Oyhev Tzedaka U Mishpat. Hashem likes the Kapshuto again with davening in this bracha for, for fear judges, for correct guidance, and so on and so forth. But in Tvil Savinenu, when we consolidate this bracha into a few words, these are the words we say. Toyem al daitcha yishafetu. Toye is someone who makes a mistake. Vehatoyim al daitcha. How do we consolidate this bracha? Shiva Shaftenik Vashina. Vehatoyim al daitcha. The ones who are mistaken about your das, your, I use the words over here, like your opinion or your vision or like what you're trying to do. They don't understand. They, they don't get you. They don't understand you. But the ones that are not understanding what you're trying to do, what you want, yishafetu. They should, it should come out, it should be judged. Okay? What do these words mean? The ones that are making a mistake, yishafetu, should be judged. Rabbeinu Yoyna, in his parish in the back of the Gemara, says something fascinating. He says, Klal Yisrael, through the course of history, has underwent difficult things. How do we understand that? In a truth, in a certain way, it's like sometimes when a parent does something for a child that's very painful for the child. The child is sick and the parent gives the kids medicine. I remember I was once by uh, my Rosh Hashiva's house many, many years at Tzadik um, and one of his kids was sick and they were trying to give this kid medicine. He was about two years old and he was a big, strong kid and like the older siblings were holding him down and the mother was like trying to give him the syringe with uh, Tylenol or antibiotics. I remember what it was. It was antibiotics. And he was like fighting, like spitting it out like he didn't want, you know, they're like... Okay, so the kid could be thinking, why are you doing this to me? Mommy, you love me. Why are you squirting this horrible tasting stuff into my mouth, you know? But why are the parents doing it? Because they love the child and he needs to get better. They want him to get much, much sicker. So they're giving him the medicine, the toyalis, right? The understanding and appreciation that when a parent does something to a child sometimes, it's to help the child. It's also true understanding the difficult times that Klai Yisrael has went through. 
It's things we need for our refuah. Hashem Yisrael gave us Bechira. We have choices and we make so many good choices. But sometimes we make mistakes. Sometimes as a nation we're heading off the wrong way. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu does L'toyeles Shalonu for our good. V'yodatim L'vavecho ki kasha yiyaser ishes benoi. Hashem alekecho miyasreko. Rebbeinu Yoyna in Shari Tshuva counts this as a mitzvah. Every year has to know the difficult things I'm going through is like a father, it's coming from love. Not chas for shalom because Hashem is angry at you and he wants to hurt you and he wants to get you back and he's going to make you teach you a lesson for not listening to him. Chas shalom. Hashem wants you to have good in your life and he's doing what to cleanse you, to prove you, to bring you back to the good place you need to be. So Rabbi Yoyna says, There are people that look. And what's going on is they like, where was God? How could Hashem let this happen? It seems to be so cruel and so evil. And the fact that we feel the pain of the people that are suffering is real. In a certain way, the, the question is coming from a place of, of being mishtat of bitzaron. But a wise person has to understand, what do you mean? So what, what's the conclusion of the suffering? Ah, so it must be Hashem doesn't like you? Hashem is cruel? No. No. Hashem is there to help you heal, to help fix what's wrong by you. If you would be able to see what's going on, you'd be able to see the result of Chasram. If I didn't get fixed, where it would lead, you would say thank you. Rahman al you know, like sometimes parents take a teenage child who's driving very wild and they take him to the hospital to, to meet a kid who was in an accident and he's crippled for life. Like, look what could happen to you. I'm not stop scaring you. It's because I don't want you to get hurt. We need to go through the painful things to bring us back to be in the good place that we need to be. So those that are making a mistake and not understanding the true will that you have and what's taking place in their life and in Kalal Yisrael's lives, Yishafetu, they should get to see the correct way to judge you, Hashem. When we talk about Melech Oyev Tzedakah U Mishpat, B'Tzad Keinu B'Mishpat, Hashem B'Matzikos, Kipshut, it means that we should be judged favorably. But there's a deeper pshat. Bitzat keinu b'mishpat means like there's the same words of the pasuk. Bitzedek tishpoi damisecho. You should judge someone else righteously because it's good. What do we don't think a person's trying to do bad? No, he's trying to do good. Judge people righteously. Understand that the ikur core, what drives a person, is the good that's inside of him. We have a mitzvah, a person who's not chasrom, known to be a rasha. Right? So every one of us is different. We have different experience. We have different ways relating to the world. But what's, where it's coming from, we have a chiv to judge people favorably. It's also, b'tzedek tishpoit amisecha, b'tzadkenu b'mishpat. When we're judging Hashem Yisparach, what you do for us, personally, for me, for the world, sometimes things could be hard. Sometimes things are painful. Sometimes things are difficult. We all experience. Sometimes it's to us and sometimes what we see other people going through. People are having parnasa challenges. You know, challenges with children. And it could hurt us father. Sometimes it's in the world, globally, in a broader vision. How many people are struggling, single, not married yet, and people suffering the world, Iran, Ukraine, there are so many different kinds of things. But how do we judge? Why is Hashem doing all this? We should judge you, Hashem, favorably. Melech oyhev tzedaka u mishpat. You love tzedaka u mishpat. That's the tzedek tishpat, the shoifet, the judgment that has in it the tzedek, the righteousness. Hashem, I know what you're doing is good. I know what you're doing is right. It's coming from a place of love. It's coming from a place of caring for us. It's coming from a place of wanting what's best for us. We don't always see it now. We don't always feel it now. And it's true that even when something is hard and difficult and painful, it's much harder, a thousand times harder, feeling that it shouldn't be this way. Why? If, you, if a person feels in his hard time, it must be Hashem doesn't love me, it must be Hashem hates me, he doesn't care about me, that makes the etzim, however difficult the thing itself is, it's so much harder when a person says, it's so hard, but Hashem, I know it's toiv, I know it's good, one day I'm going to understand, one day I'm going to appreciate, one day I'm going to say thank you to you for what you're doing to me, and I know that now. That's where Ben Yonah says, that's Pshat in his bracha. The people that don't understand. When we're going through a hard time, when we're suffering, when something is hard for us, Hashem is suffering with us. 
He went out together with us. Hashem was there with us. Like when a child is in the, you know, uh, terem and he's getting stitches, he's in the emergency clinic, he's getting stitches on his cut, the father's right there holding his hand, you know, like, squeeze my hand. If it hurts, squeeze my hand. I'm here with you. And the father is in pain for his child. He loves his child so much, but the kid needs to get the stitches. He shouldn't have some get infected. He shouldn't bleed to death. And it should heal properly. He should be able to have positive use of his finger for the rest of his life. Behold, Tarasim, like, sorry, I need to understand that. When Klal Yisrael, in this week's Parsha, Parsha's Dvarim, when Moshe Rabbeinu is given Klal Yisrael Musa, now the Eden that are standing ready to go into Eretz Yisrael, and Moshe Rabbeinu says to them, Vatoimnu, and you said, Besinas Hashem, my son, who it's the honor, my Eretz Mitzrayim, Lahamas, my son, who Klal Yisrael looked at what was happening when the Miraglim came back. And what did they say? It's so, it's so horrifying, almost, if, if we look at it. Besinas. Hashem, Kodesh Baruch took us out of Mitzrayim, the ten makas, and he was, gave us the Torah in our Sinai, and we have the Anani covered, and we have the Mon, and we have the Be'er, and Simlas Cholay Bolsa Meyer Lecha, Virag Lecholay Batseiko, and Hashem is going to take us there. So what ended up happening when we went in? What happened to the walls of Yerichai? We didn't lift, we didn't lift a finger. Going around the Shaitharis, the wall collapses into the ground. When one person died, and I, Klal Yisrael, was up in arms, something had to, be, had to change, something we realized something was wrong. Miraculous! Hashem was helping us conquer everything. And that's what we felt. We felt that was the opposite of its atkenu v'mishpat. Hashiva shavteinu k'varashayinu yotzeinu k'vatchil Hashem umuloi chaleinu ato Hashem levadecha means we should see in everything that we're going through that it's ato Hashem midas arachamim levadecha I should understand this. I should appreciate this. That whatever is going on Hashem is all l'toi v'aseinu it's for our good. It's from your love. And then the Nefilo and Klai Yisrael fell. What did they hear? Besinas Hashem Hashem hates us. He's not happy with us. He's disappointed with us. He's angry at us. He just wants to destroy us. How did Hashem feel at that moment? How could you say that I love you so much? I only want what's good for you. I want what's best for you. I'm bringing you to Eretz Yisrael. Don't worry, I'm going to do miracles for you. And Rahman al it's all it's all coming from within us, that, that distorted perception that Kla Yisrael was able to feel and say those words, Basina Sashem Sanu. Why did they why did they doomsday prediction? Why did they feel everything is black? Why did they feel everything is going to be terrible? Because they didn't they didn't feel Hashem's love for them. And other Rabbi we say in Davening, Ava Rabba, Aftonu, Hashem Likainu. Hashem is Baruch loves us such a powerful and great love, Avas Oilam. How much love Hashem has for every one of us. How much Hashem is mishtatif with our tzar and really again is to cleanse us and purify us. We should be able to be, have the greatest ganeiden loss of love even now in this world in the of Mashiach. So this is the ticket of the month of Av. In the Shmir, in the basis, the foundation within me to understand that my relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu is a relationship where I'm loved by Hashem so much. And when I train myself to see all the gifts I could walk, I have ten fingers I could see, I could eat food and my body digests it and there's a beautiful world, I walk outside and I look up the beautiful blue sky and I see the trees and the birds and the flowers and kama, kama tov Hashem and oranges and apples and tomatoes and cherries and bananas and pears, ad infinium so much HaKadosh Baruch Hu created it for us to be nene, we have to feel overwhelming Hashem's love for us look at the rebirth of Klal Yisrael Yeshivas and Koilim and Mikvahs and kosher pizza stores and everything HaKadosh Baruch you're giving us so much and we need to feel to change to be Mesakin the Chet of our office we're not just waiting for Mashiach to come we're part of the process and when we fix that Shairish of Tisha B'Av it's not Besinus Hashem Yisonu it's Be'avas Hashem Yisonu and when we're able to see that in us but people say what do you mean Rabbi but I'm not perfect. You know how many things I did wrong? You think God loves me? <laughs> yeah, I do. Not I do. I know. Because no one is perfect. Hashem Yisbaruch created us and He gave us a world which is so challenging. And He he's understands our failures and He rejoices in our accomplishments. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu is there with us through our journey in life. He understands. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu Hashem Yisbaruch doesn't demand of us things that are impossible for us to do. And we're growing, we're working, we're changing. Little by little, we, we're, we're trying to get there. HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Ba'avas Hashem Yisbaruch Hu, the Helga Arachayim HaKadosh says, on the Pasuk where HaKadosh Baruch Hu is, is uh, blocked Bilam from giving us a klala, the Pasuk in Kiseitzei, 
The Pasuk over there says, Hashem didn't want to listen to Bilam. Lo balo. He wasn't, no, he didn't want to listen to Bilam. Bilam wanted to curse us. Why? Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu loves you. And over there, the Arachayim HaKadosh says, why did Bilam want to curse us? Because we did the Egel. Because we were Chayte. And Bilam was trying to get Hashem angry. You remember what they did? Remember that time your kid broke that fancy china ball? He was running around in the dining room? Remember? You remember? Like, yeah, give him a patch. You know, like, no, Bilam, you missed the whole thing. You don't get it. It doesn't create a rutz and to hurt us. Hashem is Baruch, whenever Hashem is Baruch has to give us instruments to bring us back, to cleanse us, to purify, to put us back in the good place where we want to be there. We need to feel that Hashem loves you even when you're not perfect. And then we understand it's Because when you feel that way with yourself, despite the fact that I'm imperfect, despite the fact that I sometimes do things wrong, Hashem is with me. He understands me. He's proud of the good that I do. And He understands that it's hard. And He, understands, he accepts me for who I am. Then I'm able to accept everyone else also. Like I could understand, to be honest with myself, I could understand that I'm imperfect and yet I have room to grow. There's a reason why we don't die when we're 20. Because we're not Muslim yet. We're not complete. We do things wrong. There's a reason why we don't die when we're 30 and 40 and 50. But even clearly. Because Hashem is Baruch gives us life, opportunity to better ourselves. Now, obviously, if you're better when you're 30 than you were, when you were at 20, when you were 20, you were doing a lot of things wrong. That's fine. And when you're better 40 than you were at 30, you're also improving. That, that's what it's about at each stage. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu loves us. And when I have that ayin toiva, when I could put myself kav yachol and appreciate Hashem's vision of His beloved nation, Klal Yisrael, Abayichar, Ba'am Yisrael, Be'ab, the whole nation, everybody, the working guy, the learning guy, the Kirov Rabbah, everybody, all of us. HaKadosh Baruch Hu loves us all for what we contribute and then ma'isim toivim, the neshama toiva we have. Then we have an ayin toiva that's the opposite of Lashon Haran Sinas Chinam. It's to have an ayin toiva, to be Mesach and Tamas, to have shmi'a toiva, to always dehair the good, to be Mesach and the, 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 the toes, the mistake of up. When we have that back and we are going to be able to feel all of us together as a nation between us and Hashem Yisbarach, we're going to feel ba'avas Hashem Yisanu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, how much you love us, how we're going to feel safe and secure and batuach in his hands that's what we're going to be zoicha that Hashem is will be able to be megala to us because we're waiting for it we appreciate it we understand that he wants to give it to us we should be zoicha to see the gili hasholem ki molo arts deo es Hashem kamayim liyam achasem will be deo es Hashem to understand and connect to Shem Hashem the Shem Havaya that's present in our life and in the world we should be zoicha together to go be Ezra Yisbarach to greet Mashiach Tzidkenu together with all of Kala Yisrael coming back home and to dance in the Beis HaMikdash B'yachad B'mheira B'yameinu Amen B'yameinu Ha'gute Nacht If you enjoyed today's episode don't forget to subscribe if you would like to help us spread the word give this video a thumbs up and a five star review also don't forget to ask your friends to subscribe as well if you would like to partner with us and sponsor an episode send an email to info at jfoundations Dot com. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful day. We will see you in the next video.